everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the American English Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Charlie. You guys know him already. He's been on the podcast twice before. He's been on two episodes. We talked about British desserts and just dessert adjectives in general. And that was a few episodes back. I'll, I'll mention the episode numbers at the end of this podcast if you'd like to listen to them. And he's back again to talk about trips, an ideal trip that he would like to take uh, somewhere in the world. I don't know yet. So we have a, I have a series of questions for him and we're going to dive into his imagination and see what, yeah, what his ideal experience would look like. So welcome, Charlie. Hello. Thank you very much for having me yet again. I'm honored. Yes. The British English podcast is doing phenom phenomenally by the way, I'm very impressed with the episodes and the, you know, the different things that you're coming out with. How Aww. is it going? Yeah, it's going really well. Thank you very much for saying that. Yeah, we're almost yeah. at a year old. Yeah, yeah, this month. So uh, I'm happy with the progress that a year I I've managed to do within a year. And uh, yeah, I'm having more fun thinking up different ideas. I've, I've recently stumbled across the idea of doing commentary on uh, children's books, which is actually <gasps> creating a lot of fun for me when I'm writing it. Yeah. Ooh, OK. Books that people would know, like you know, really common books? Hopefully, or? yeah, like um, yeah. Uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears or Little Good Red one. Riding Hood. Yeah, things okay. like that. Yeah, just depicting. Yeah. And are these uh, sort of funny commentaries that you're doing on them or sort of like... I'm hoping they're slightly entertaining. Yeah, it's uh -huh. my sort of um, rational British perspective on what the story is saying and, and why, you know, like the wolf, uh, the, the, the little girl, she speaks to that wolf. You don't talk to strangers right. and certainly not a talking wolf. What are you doing? That's in your mental. grandma's clothes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, in the woods, I think they 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 uh, meet, okay. and she says, "Oh, I'm just going over to my grandma's." Well, yeah. Don't do that. Mental. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's actually really cool. And is that mostly mostly British authors then of children's books, or is it? I've only done two, and I think okay. the Red Riding Hood was British. Uh, Goldilocks and Three Bears was that what? British? I think Rotkäppchen. That was German, I believe. No, Rotkäppchen. Okay. The red, Little Red Riding Hood. I yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, oh, Little Red, Red Riding Grimm, Hood was. Oh, right? sorry, yeah. Goldilocks and the Three Bears seems British. I don't know why. Something about. Yeah, I think I got it wrong. The other the, way around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. I definitely will want to tune into those. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice. So today we're going to be talking about traveling, and just to start off with, are you a big traveler? Uh, yeah, I would say I am. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. globe trotter, okay. globe trotter. And where have you lived in your life? Such in my life, <laughs> uh, I've lived in England. Question. I've lived in the mm -hmm. south of uh, England and in the Midlands because I went to university mm -hmm. in Nottingham, and then I went to Chile. Uh, I lived in Santiago, and then I travelled uh -huh. up and down. Uh, the coast of that country, although the coast is pretty much the country. So I traveled up and down the country. <laughs> and then Bolivia, Peru, um, I've done a bunch of holidays in other locations, but I've lived in America, in Ohio, and then Germany, uh, in Nuremberg, in Bavaria, and then over in Sydney, Australia. Oh my gosh. Or and... sorry, I should have said Nuremberg, Nuremberg. <laughs> not Nuremberg. But it sounds like you also speak the languages of, you know, well, you, you speak Spanish, right? I'm, I'm learning Spanish. I'm, I'm genuinely a terrible language learner. And that's why I have so much respect for every English learner, because really? I find it very difficult. But um, okay. yeah, I learned German to a very basic standard when mm -hmm. I was living there. 
but um, mm-hmm. struggled. I struggled with it. Yeah, big time. Took the lessons, but okay. it didn't didn't stick. And why do you think that is? Just out of curiosity. I'm asking myself that question every day. Um, <laughs> I think it's something to do with my 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 way of looking at learning, uh, especially at the beginner level. I'm I, I'm overcomplicating my thoughts and I want to try and mm-hmm. express myself in quite mm-hmm. detailed ways. So I need to really mm-hmm. try to step back and and just be basic. Got you. Got you. Yeah. 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 It's that always the beginning is always the I think at least for me, the trickiest part, trying to figure out like how to absorb as much information as possible in a very logical way. But you're Spanish. I know you had a Spanish class right before speaking today. So I'm just assuming your Spanish is really nice. And you are a very humble British person. As we know from your culture, you are humble. So I know that your language level is much higher than you're actually making it out to be. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you think that then. I'll let you think Okay. That. <laughs> well, okay. So you've lived in all of these different countries and it sounds like you've traveled a lot too. Do you normally enjoy driving or flying? So I like the idea of road trips and I've done a, 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 a week in a van in Sardinia and we it was like a camping van like a you know like a a renovated builder's van turned into a camper van kind of style wow and i enjoyed that although it was immensely hot we went in the peak of the summer which is very silly and uh it was basically like living in an oven for a, a week so it wasn't a good move in terms of the temperature but i like i like the idea of having the ability to to just go wherever you want and stop wherever you want that's really nice mm-hmm. but i don't like driving too much and i get a bit stressed when i drive in a city <laughs> the traffic jams and things like that or what is it about the city that you don't like driving through it, yeah it's it's ne- uh, negotiating with all of the junctions and multiple different motorways and and signs that's what annoys me when there's too many signs and then it's hard to know which lane you should be in and in sydney there's loads of toll roads so every decision you make could cost you at least ten dollars Wow! so it's quite stressful for that reason and then it leads you literally to the other side of the city so it's a time time consuming mistake yeah one question on that and i don't want to go on a crazy tangent here but I was thinking this morning, Americans always talk about driving in Britain and the horror of driving in the seat, you know, in the left seat rather than, no, wait, I have to think, the right seat rather than the left seat. And I'm wondering, it's the same thing for you guys because you you were born and raised in a country where, you know, you're just on the, the opposite side. So is it really hard for you? traveling to other countries or does it does it come more naturally because you're just in Europe and you normally travel to France and Germany and countries where it is on the opposite side sorry that was a very convoluted question yeah so that's a funny question that you asked thinking that you've just realized that it might be the same situation for the for British people (laughs) it is a problem for us but um I never thought about that (laughs) that's so funny uh yeah it is a problem for us but I think we're used to experiencing it more often than you guys. So we do know that it's possible to do. Yeah. Right. Just really quick also, because this is this is my tangent that I kind of wanted to go on. When I was on swim team, on the swim team in high school, there was a big discussion with the other people on the swim team about <laughs> swimming in Britain. Do you guys swim on the other side too? When you're walking on the sidewalk, are you on the other side too? Like, how far does this opposite thing go? <laughs> Sorry if that's a ridiculous question, but it's a curiosity. Yeah, we we go left. Yeah, yeah. But when you go down a staircase, if there's multiple people, would you go on the right side? Yes. Okay, yeah. I think everything's the opposite. So you would go on the left going up a yeah. stair- staircase. That, this is the problem because I was in... England for the first time when I was 17 
And I remember g getting so confused because you have to look the opposite way, you know, when you're looking for oncoming traffic like I need to cross the street and I'm like looking the wrong way like back and forth like where the heck are the cars coming from I'm so <laughs> lost um anyway okay back to you and your driving so so you would prefer driving but just not in a city is that correct I I would like to take a uh, an airplane or maybe something more fancy maybe ah oh, you know what I want to do I want to take the Virgin Intergalactic spaceship that goes across the stratosphere what? as my plane and then land and then have a road trip somewhere. So what's, sorry, what's Virgin Galactic? Do you know Richard Branson? Mm, sounds familiar. It's ringing he's a bell. A he's a British billionaire. Mm -hmm. He's kind of on the level of Jeff Bezos or probably not actually. Mm. But mm -hmm. uh, he beat Jeff Bezos by one week into space. Uh, there was a bit of a, a thing about it last month. Um, yeah, commercial space travel, basically. They were both trying to get to that point. And um, right. I remember when I was 21, uh, my friend and I, we said, how are we going to celebrate our 30th birthday? Because we said, because uh, we share the same birthday. And I said, you know what? When we're 30, I reckon it'll be cheap enough to go to space. So that was my dream. I'm now 31 and it's still mm -hmm. a little bit too expensive by 300,000 pounds, I think. So uh, I'd like that to be part of my itinerary, I think. Yeah, go to space. In this itinerary, would you be paying for this? Like no! with your millions and millions of dollars? Like, are you, is everything yeah. hypothetical here? Like, do you have, are you just like a crazy billionaire like Jeff Bezos to make this trip happen? Or is this just... You know, imaginary money. No, this costs nothing because I would never be able to part with that much money. Even if I had that much money, I, I would feel bad not giving it to the the needy. Yeah, that would I be. See. Yeah, How that that would that would you. not happen. Actually, couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, very selfless. How generous. <laughs> mm. The sponsor for this episode is Italki. I'm a big fan of Italki, guys italki is a one-on-one -on -one language learning platform that allows you to practice english with qualified english teachers from around the world via zoom skype or whatever service you prefer to use italki is actually how i got my first students back in 2014. since then i've taught over a thousand classes on the platform and taken a lot of language classes what I love about italki is how easy it is to find the perfect teacher in your price range. You can even search for speciality, if that's business English, test prep, or conversational English. When you sign up through the link provided in the episode notes, you'll get three free trial sessions with the teachers of your choice. When you schedule one class before the end of September, You'll also get the opportunity to win $140 worth of free classes. That's three months of English classes. Crazy deal. So don't miss out. Be sure to sign up through the link provided in the episode notes. Now back to today's episode. Are you going to be traveling in this virgin galactic uh what is that what it's called virgin galactic flight alone sure yeah i think it's an in uh vir virgin galac galactic yeah 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 that's it yeah would you be traveling alone so flying solo or would you prefer to be with a group or with stacy mm, mm. yeah good question i think i'd be a bit too scared to go to go it alone, I could say, to go it alone. So I'd probably bring um, Stacy with me. It would either be traveling with Stacy or with Harry. Harry's my YouTube partner and uh, we, we've, done, we've done a few trips together and he's got a similar mentality towards me, towards traveling. And he gets the best out of me. Like he makes me try things that I wouldn't necessarily try. Uh, uh -huh. whereas, whereas with Stacy, I'm quite comfortable and, and she'll... I don't know. She she's quite adventurous with cuisine and stuff. We'll get to, but I struggle with some things. So I 
I tend to say no a bit more to her than I would I with the social see. pressures of a friend. I see. So Stacy or Harry, and one of them is with you on this on this flight. And where are you um, starting from? Do you have a location where you'd like to go first? We'll go from here. We'll go from Sydney. Yeah, the, the, we can build a space, you know, runway, a, a space shuttle <laughs> runway or a launch pad. That's the word launch pad. Oh, launch pad. That's right. Perfect. OK. And any specific direction you would go? Like, do you have a final destination? Yes, I would like to go to um, to start with, I think I would like to go to the Maldives. I've heard Ooh. about it being very, very nice. Yeah. So let, let's end up in the Maldives, maybe parachute into the Maldives. Okay. Wow. That is that is uh, that sounds very nice. Um, well, the Maldives are islands, are they not? Mm. So potential to land maybe in the water <laughs> if you parachute, possibly. It's Have true. You... Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. And there are sharks in that. Sh uh, it's um, shark infested waters. So I better not get cut uh, parachuting. <laughs> that would be bad. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? What, a bit, what an end to the perfect itinerary. <laughs> Uh, dead. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. And then, so you are skydiving. Have you skydived before? No. They say if you haven't done it by 30, you won't ever do it. But maybe mm -hmm. if Harry is there, he'll egg me on to do it. Mm. Very nice phrasal verb there. To egg on. What does that mean, Charlie? I love it. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Um, mm. To encourage. Yeah, to encourage somebody to do something. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So you are uh, on your way to the Maldives if you don't land in the water and get eaten by sharks. <laughs> and when you get there, would you choose to stay in a resort? Or, I mean, resort versus road trips. I mean, which would you choose? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to put it into the Maldives that question. Uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there, there only are re really there are only resorts in the Maldives. I remember my first okay. girlfriend when I was eighteen. She used to go there every year with her family. They never invited me, of course. Oh. Um, but uh, I was always very jealous of it. You were excluded from that. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, and so she probably got back wanting to talk about her trip, but it it almost seems like you can't talk about something that's that nice without sounding like you're bragging you know yeah <laughs> yeah so were you pretty jealous back then or like what was your yeah i was yeah. although i didn't get on with the mum very well so i was probably glad That's that i why. didn't have uh, a week or two trapped with her on a desert island <laughs> one of us would probably have throttled the other by the end <laughs> yeah uh, so you would be happy to stay at a resort then for for this one, yeah, this is like yeah. the extreme. You know, I I said on on um, the episode that we did about your itinerary on 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 the British English podcast, I said that the resort kind of concept is frowned upon by traveling pe or people who like to travel or go on adventures in in the south of Spain or places like that. That that kind of resort is very much just drinking what you can and and sunbathing. But mm -hmm. I think the Maldives because it's such a place of paradise i think i'd allow it and i'd enjoy it i'd really mm -hmm. i'd really enjoy that yeah. so how would you spend your days then if you were staying at a resort would you you know just kick back and yeah i would kick back and, and enjoy the sun but i'd also try to get a bit into scuba diving it's quite popular there Ooh. That's why she went, actually, my, my ex-girlfriend. She was a big scuba uh -huh. diver. And she used to do... She e even did night dives. Oh, why? <laughs> yeah. Oh, question. there's some... Maybe some sea... Those sea creatures that are neon and glow in the dark sort of thing. That's true. Like, That's true. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. there would make absolutely no sense at all. Like, oh, I'm just underwater and it's black. <laughs> That's yeah. got to be something like that. Um, 
Interesting. So you would you would scuba dive there? I oh. try to. I have problems with okay. my sinuses when I go underwater a bit. So probably I'd probably try it and then give up and just do snorkeling, but I'd give it a go at least. And how do you feel underwater if you were to go, you know, 10 feet below the water surface? Do you have any other concerns other than sharks? No. Um no? I do get a bit claustrophobic you know in in small spaces but uh, the open water scares me a bit when i'm on top of it and i can't see down especially in sydney like i constantly think there's a shark mm. underneath me definitely but um i think if i'm mm. scuba diving and i can see and i'm almost there for the the whale sharks with which are those massive ones that are kind of mm. speckled white they they wouldn't they wouldn't they would intimidate me but they wouldn't scare me thinking i would be eaten alive i would be more like in awe of them i guess i see okay uh have you ever done anything similar to that before like swimming with interesting animal life sea creatures and things like that uh yes yes uh, i did a trip from <laughs> ohio down to Cancun, <laughs> down to Cancun, and then Cancun down to Belize. And Belize has a couple of islands off it, and one of them called Key Calca. I think I'm saying it right. And uh, that is another island of just amazing um, marine life, but beauty, just generally. Mm. And we stayed there and did a few trips out to the sea and or the corals and yeah we were right. we were with some nurse sharks I, I think they're the the most timid shark that you can get but oh, i felt nice. comfortable with them so that was the nice. sort of stepping stone towards this adventure okay yeah yeah baby steps you know you, can, exactly. you definitely got to work your way up to i think be around these well sharks you mentioned sounds not yeah. as <laughs> not as timid <laughs> Um, very nice though. That sounds, uh, magical. And I think if you're in the Maldives, at least from the photos I've seen in the past, crystal clear water, you definitely won't have to worry about not being able to see what's beneath you. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And temperature wise, I mean, let's think about this. So you live in Sydney, you got, I mean, Australia weather, you, you grew up in, England. I mean, you've been to Chile. You, you've you've been, been in a lot of different climates already. So, like, what is your ideal climate? That's true. Yeah. Um, I the the thing I find most frustrating about the UK's weather is that it's very boring. That's the main problem. <laughs> it's it's always okay. it's always just an averagely poor day i've noticed in you know in ohio in well in pretty much everywhere else i've been it's been more extreme even in nuremberg like you really can see the winter versus the summer it's it's mm -hmm. much more extreme like really really cold minus 20 degrees sometimes mm -hmm. and then you know upper 30s but I think I like the variation because it gives me seasons. Having mm -hmm. said that, uh, Australia's winter, as I said in the last recording we did, is, is low 20s and blue skies. Mm -hmm. And I can't complain. It's beautiful. I love it. Right. And just uh, for the listeners, I don't think there are very many of you that understand Fahrenheit like the back of your hand, but low 20s would be probably between around 75, 75, 80 or so, I believe. Uh, it's very comfortable sort of room temperature, right? Ish? Room temperature ish? Yes. <laughs> I, would, I would go slightly above room temperature, but yeah, you're, okay. yeah, 20, yeah, 23 is 75, as you said, yeah. Okay, so for your trip, what would you decide then? What was your final answer? Um, I'm going to go a bit... Because it's going to be a resort, I want to sunbathe, so I'm going to say mm -hmm. high 20s. But mm -hmm. in Australia, they've taught us about not just the temperature, but the UV index, the mm -hmm. um, how strong the sun is. In the UK, we have no education about this, and that's why many of us end up in skin cancer clinics in Australia, um, British people. Oh, interesting. Um, so... I'd like a low UV index, please. 
Yes. It yeah. goes up to 13, I think. And around four or five is where you don't need to worry too much, but you should still put a bit of sun cream on, definitely. But, yeah. Okay. Sun, sun cream, you say? In yeah. English? English? Sun cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, that, we do say other words, but what do you say? We say sunscreen. Sunscreen yes. would be the lotion that you put on or... Um, I'm thinking in sunblock? other languages, sunblock as well. Yeah, sunblock. But yeah. I would go with, yeah, sunscreen is my go-to. But interesting. I like that. Uh, so you don't want to get skin cancer, uh, no. which is a wonderful plan. I mean, that's 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 great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the weather is going to be perfect with no ultraviolet rays hitting you. Sounds lovely. Are you going to be eating everything at your resort then when mm. you are sitting by the pool sunbathing and you know, taking in this non-ultraviolet light <laughs> yeah this is this is tricky for me so i was going to say that i'd like to do an adventure across somewhere crazy for me like china yeah. and okay. um and have like a, a motorbike tour because uh, i did a i did a bicycle trip after university my friend said Let's do a bicycle trip from um, the south of England down to Pamplona in Spain and then run with the bulls. And it was um, pretty mental. That was probably wow. the the most adventurous holiday I've, I've been on. And uh, we said, OK, in two years, we're going to do a motorbiking version of this somewhere else. And we, <gasps> we thought, OK, let's do it in China or somewhere that would really um, shock us to the core. And... I was contemplating that, but when it comes to food, I think I'd struggle to eat. I think I'd struggle to survive in China because I'm not the most adventurous. I find it hard to eat seafood. Oh, and okay. so therefore, from a Westerner's perspective, I think I might die of starvation in China. I know there's <laughs> loads, I'm sure I'm wrong, but that's my perspective at the moment. And I'd be very welcome to being told uh, otherwise. Well, you know, if you do that trip, you, you got to bring Harry with you, make you try some, <laughs> some, some different types of food. So what is the most adventurous thing you've eaten? Do you well, have funny, something off the top of your mind? <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I have something for you. And it's very funny that you should say this because in our other recording on my one, um, you said that you wouldn't eat testicles you're very very adventurous and you'd eat anything but testicles but i've eaten lamb testicles oh my gosh how did you not mention that on your podcast i know i was really <laughs> tempted but i wanted to save it yeah so i ate lamb testicles oh. um in greece with harry so okay so he can push you to really get adventurous with food he can he can make me eat some testicles yeah and so what what did it taste like uh, it tasted Sorry. like bollocks. Yeah, it tasted exactly like bollocks would taste like. Um, I would Bo say... Bollocks? Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. What is bollocks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, bollocks is... I hear is, British is... people saying this all the time and I don't know actually what it means. Oh, do you really not? Oh, it just means testicles. No. It's just an informal word oh. for testicles. Oh, yeah. how funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bollocks. Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I could see why that's not very nice to say. Yeah. Oh, I'm just imagining that you're just realizing some social situations that you've gone through in your life where a man might have suggested something about bollocks and you're suddenly the pe the pe <laughs> the coins drop or the pennies drop. Yeah. And you're realizing, yeah. oh, that's what they meant. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's funny. I I feel like I'm I'm doing, having a flashbacks of all the British shows I've always watched and you know you you just hear bollocks 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 like it's all all the time like I think it's just maybe more noticeable because uh, we don't use it so it kind of sticks out but not knowing what it means yeah I'm trying to think about like the situations I've seen and the different parts of shows I missed like not understanding exactly the connotation of the word anyway yeah, it, sorry yeah. but but before we go on it's a versatile word so it's it's you know how people could say balls as in ah oh, balls like that we'd say ah oh, bollocks ah oh, okay. god damn it kind of like that yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. could also say that is the bollocks that is um the best thing that's that's really good that's the shit yeah that's the shit yeah exactly uh-huh i probably won't ever use that but 
yeah, we because we don't use it here. But yeah, I like I like knowing that. That's good knowledge to have. Pardon me, I need um, to add dog. Dog's bollocks. That's that's the phrase. The dog's bollocks. That's the that's the shit. The dog's bollocks. That's the dog's bollocks. <laughs> Not even I, joking. I, I, I. I'm not even joking. Funny, funny, <laughs> funny. All right. So that is the most adventurous thing you've eaten. And now going back to the Maldives, what are what are you gonna have for you know appetizer, main dish, and for uh, we have your on your question we have pudding, but in American English we would say dessert. So what would be your full you know your full course from start to finish? I'm imagining a light, uh, fruity start to the day. Mm-hmm. I can imagine they'll want to give me some watermelon, but I don't like watermelon, so we're going to change that to like oh, pine, pine, pineapple. Okay. Uh, watermelon is is very non-existent. It it just it doesn't feel like I'm eating much. It's just like I'm crunching water. Yeah, but is, do you yeah. like uh, do you like ice? Do you like cotton candy? I, 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 <laughs> there are I don't so know many... cotton candy, although I think you taught me it, but I've forgotten it. Uh, I, ice. I like ice, but I don't like crushing it. I don't. Okay. In your in your mouth. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't like crushing it in my mouth as, as that being the only so source of odd. taste. I see. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could keep going with this, but that's that's wild. Okay. So no watermelon, pineapple. You're gonna go with. Let's go with pineapple. Some pear. All right. Maybe mm-hmm. apple, banana. That's all good. Yeah, I like that. Start the day off light. Have some scuba mm-hmm. diving or do some scuba diving. Then for lunch, I will have worked up an appetite. So nice. I would probably have a carb heavy meal. Maybe a a good mm-hmm. pasta. But again, this is just me thinking of my favourites and not really dipping into what the Maldives could offer me. I don't know much about what they would offer, but given that it's a resort, I'm imagining that they would not give too many local cuisine. They they would go mm. with international food, right? Mm, yeah, I believe that. That sounds pretty pretty accurate. I think so. One quick thing too before we continue talking about this. Uh, Banana, we would say in American English. You said what? Banana? Banana? <laughs> um, banana. 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 Okay. So banana in American English and um, pasta. And you mm, said? Pasta. Pasta. That's fun. I haven't heard that one. Okay. Cool. All right. So yeah, I would guess uh, international cuisine. Yes. So I think you probably would be pretty safe with your... Um, it sounds like your limited, <laughs> limited interest in uh, foreign foods. <laughs> yeah. Although I'm looking at some pictures now and they are um, suggesting that there will be some battered fish or at least uh, fish uh, served whole mm-hmm. in a buffet style kind of concept. And, and as I said, mm-hmm. I'm not a good seafood consumer, so I, I wouldn't do well with that. No. So do you eat fish and chips? No, I don't. I'm just oh. trying to get onto it. But no, I would always go for a sausage and chips. Jumbo sausage, okay. which is yeah. the alternative in the, the wow. chippy. Yeah, actually, one of my friends, just uh, on a side note here, one of my friends from back in the day used to get really annoyed by not liking certain types of food. He was like, wanted to be the most adventurous eater out there. And so he didn't like olives green olives and he decided the way to start liking food was to eat it constantly <laughs> or like on a very very regular basis and i'm just curious if you've you've thought about that i have like, you know, tried i to. have thought about that mm-hmm. i've approached i've approached peanut butter with the same concept and <gasps> succeeded and now i love wow. it but but i think fish well, it's not that it's really expensive, but traditionally, Stacy, my partner, she would make it like, you know, like a, a full dinner and then you'd have uh-huh. the piece of chick- piece of chicken or the piece of fish. And if I don't like that fish, then the whole meal is kind of like, oh, well, I went to a big effort there. You, you know, if you're not going to like yeah. it, why should I do it? So mm. I've tried and I just end up gagging. I have this gag reflex like, Whoa! Mm. and she doesn't like that (laughs) for some reason (laughs) yeah gagging while you're eating her food i don't i don't blame her (laughs) (laughs) 
So that's what's put a stop to it. Mm. Yeah. So it makes it makes cooking tricky. That's for sure. I mean, I feel the same way with um, uh, a lot of different meats. I'm really not good at preparing meat. I was almost vegetarian for a very long period of time. And so I just kind of was like, okay, well, whatever I eat that's meat is going to be probably cold cuts or something that's already sort of pre-made from the the supermarket. And nowadays, if I prepare something, I I get sort of the impression that Lucas is uh, like revolted by the food (laughs) I prepare, by, by any sort of meat I prepare. It looks like mystery meat in like a school cafeteria. Not good. <laughs> so the gag reflex is definitely happening. Yeah, it definitely happens at our house as well. <laughs> Are you saying whenever you prepare a meal with meat? Yes. I mean, not unless it's shrimp. I'm okay. pretty good at shrimp. You, it's really hard to go wrong. Not unless you like cook it over four minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's life. So I shouldn't um, come to you for Thanksgiving. Oh, no. I mean, we can have a potluck. <laughs> other people will bring a lot of that, the other the other goodies. Oh, we'll have the, I'll, yeah. I'll make the side dishes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. All right. So and then for your pudding, for your dessert, would you... So you've had pineapple and all these fresh t- types of fruit. You've gone scuba diving. And now you've, you've eaten battered fish, possibly. Uh, maybe. Maybe oh, if would maybe. you no gagging? Okay. Yeah, well, it depends if Harry is next to me or Stacy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what what's the rest of your meal? Like, what's coming? Um, for pudding or dessert? Oh, pasta. Sorry, you had pasta, right? Yes, yes, pasta, pasta. Australians say pasta, and they had a brand when I came out here first time. It read faster pasta for me, and I didn't understand it. I was like, that's a rubbish brand. Why would you call yourself faster pasta? Oof. But I guess it reads a bit more poetically or, or it reads a bit better with uh, faster, faster pasta. pasta. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they say faster, faster, right? They say faster. Faster, uh, faster. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm they say, we all, I think we all say faster the same, right? You say it. Faster. Oh, faster. you say faster, faster, Fast, faster, no, <laughs> faster, faster. No, no that's faster. yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pudding, 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 pudding. Uh, cheesecake, yes, Ooh, cheesecake yes. or apple crumble or uh, chocolate brownie. Um, anything very, very rich like that. I would, I would lap up. Or your favorite sticky toffee pudding. Like there we go. Last time you like. There we go. Good <laughs> memory. Nice. And so, what activities other than scuba diving would you do at this phenomenal resort? Would you? I mean, what do you do? Okay, you can snorkel too, but that's kind of similar to scuba diving. If you've gone all the way under, maybe it's not as exciting. Just staying on the top of the water. I'm not sure. What other things would you do? I Maldives? think I would. I think I would invest in learning how to use that crazy apparatus that has become relatively popular now. It makes you look like a futuristic uh, X-Man when you're... uh, It's the aqua-powered jet thing that you're like levitating 20 feet off the air and you're able to do somersaults. Do you know what I mean? I have seen that. Oh my gosh. I don't I'm know the name of it. Lucas showed me videos of this and I was like, what in the world? I don't, it looks like something from, I don't know, even know what year, <laughs> very far in the future. Oh, flyboarding, flyboarding. Flyboarding. Okay, mm. I'm going to look at a picture really quick just to see if we're talking about the same thing because I believe we are. Flyboarding. Yes. Ooh, no. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, similar to what I was thinking, but no. I'm going to have to, I'll send you an image. Or I'll post even the image for everybody, what Lucas was talking about. But yes, it looks like you're attached to something on this flyboard. Well, you, you, you can't just fly. It's not a magic trick. What have you got? Mm, what are you thinking yeah, of? No, it's definitely something where you can fly, but Lucas found. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely going to post it because it, it, I was in shock. But it looks <laughs> like, so what are you connected to here in, this, in one of these images? I think you're, you're connected to, pole. you're actually connected to a jet ski. So the jet ski is reversing 
the power of the engine or something like that and then okay. it's um projecting the water under your feet through a pipe so oh, you get the goodness. the jet sensation under your feet Ooh, okay so anybody that is interested in <laughs> I don't know. It looks like you're defying gravity in a bunch of stuff in this photo. Uh, so if anybody's interested in that, that's called fly boarding. And yes, once again, I will post an image of the thing that Lucas was showing me on his phone. So very cool activity to do. Yeah. Good choice. Maybe that. Uh, a few more water sports. And another mm -hmm. thing I'd like to, to get, massage. A massage. What did you say? A mass. Massage. <laughs> what was that again? Massage. Okay massage very nice very nice good good differentiation between mm. pronunciation there uh full swedish massage or thai massage what would you go for i've had a, i've had a, a thai one i don't actually know what a swedish swedish massage entails is it just mm. a standard massage yeah i think so i i remember i got one before and there were a lot of oils involved i'm not sure like what exactly the difference is between the thai and swedish one um that is a good question but i just remember getting pretty much beat up the last time i did a thai massage and it wasn't like that with the swedish one oh, okay uh, no i don't i don't want to be beaten up i don't want a hard whenever i have a massage i say go soft on me please i'm a i'm a flower so i don't okay. like <laughs> the the you know slapping battering kind of technique i like the, okay more the um, swedish one then because it says the swedish massage is quote designed to relax the entire body by rubbing the muscles in long gliding strokes in the direction of blood returning to the heart Sign so me up. yeah that yeah one. that sounds like a massage for a flower <laughs> <laughs> yeah. very nice okay so massages and water sports and uh, how long are you going to be staying in the maldives I think I'd get bored after probably 10 days, maybe two weeks. I could push it to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a resort I'd probably get a bit bored of eventually. I've noticed that I am actually addicted to my job, to, to doing the podcast and, and stuff on the mm -hmm. website. So I might actually take my laptop and do a bit of work and, and even make a podcast there and see how long that would... I, maybe I could go a month if I could work there at the same time, do a couple of hours yeah. of of work and then, you know, jump on my flyboard and then end with a Swedish <laughs> masha, massage. God, I can't say that word today. Uh, so, yeah, if I'm allowed to take my work and kind of fit it around my schedule, I could go there for a couple of months, maybe, yeah, one one to two months. But if it's just a holiday, maximum two weeks. Gosh, you. yeah, it sounds like, I mean, you'd be living the dream. Everyone it feels like the whole world wants to be a digital nomad. And if you were able to do that while in the Maldives, then power to you. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. I saw something funny about self-employment, though. It was like a guy who was questioning why he had chosen the path of self-employment. He was like, uh, when I was working nine to five, I said, I want to work three hours. Instead, I'm working every single hour of the day. <laughs> Think, it's so uh, true. Yeah, thinking about uh, going to bed whenever you want, but similar kind of concept and uh, a bunch of other things that I can't recall right now. But basically, yeah, you think that it's going to be amazing. And then in reality, your your freedom is somewhat questionable. Yeah, you definitely end up working more. You actually can never turn off. That's that's, that's the main it. issue for me. If you wake up in the morning, the first thing you're thinking is like, okay, what can I do now? You know, even if you mm. don't have time, you're still thinking about it. So yeah, but as long as you love it, I mean, that's that's how I feel as well. So we're doing yeah. the right thing, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, love, yeah. It. Love, it. Yeah. love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Great, great, great. Perfect. Well, is there anything you else you'd like to share about your wonderful, I keep saying wonderful, it's such a, you know, overused word, your extravagant trip over to the Maldives? Uh, no, I think I'd be a bit exhausted by the end of going into space, mm -hmm. skydiving, and then uh, doing this flyboarding. I think the massage would be really good. I'd like to have one every day <laughs> if possible. Teach Stacy. Um, <laughs> no, I'm quite con yeah, yeah, yeah. I could teach Stacy. Um, I I'd be quite content with that. I do love skiing. Um, mm -hmm. So if my knee holds up to it now, I'd like to go somewhere else to ski for a couple of days or so. But mm -hmm. that would have to be a, 
a very big trip somewhere much colder. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I like it. Lovely. Well, I love your answers. It, it, sounds, it sounds like a dream. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on the podcast today. I think you let everybody travel in their own minds. You took everybody <laughs> on a trip. And so that was very special. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show. And once again, everybody, if you want to listen to Charlie's podcast, it is the British English podcast. And where can they find you? They can find me at the British English podcast dot com. But yeah, thank you very much for having me. It was a delight going through this uh, <laughs> idea or itinerary. And uh, yeah, I love having the chance to have a conversation with you. Happy to be here. <laughs> All right. Until next time, Charlie. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, guys, I forgot to mention this, but if you want to check out the other episodes with Charlie, he was on episode number 85, an episode about tea time and baking vocabulary, and episode number 89, when we got creative and described desserts in English. Check those out. And yeah. Talk to you guys next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.